is holding your life we believe God is holding your life yes God is holding your life oh, God is holding your Welcome, friends, to East Weymouth Congregational Church. We're glad you found us on our social media platform, and you can check out our worship any time of the day or night that you need prayers or a message of hope. Please know that even though we are worshiping and we are church virtually right now during the pandemic, as we keep each other safe, we are here for you. If you need support in the community, if you need a prayer, please reach out to us. We have a saying in our denomination, no matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. So let us open in prayer. Let us pray. God of our devotion, you are the constant in life. Open us this day to see the things that hold us in their grip so that we might shed unnecessary distractions that keep us from seeing your reign on earth as it is in heaven. We praise you for being our rock and our salvation, holding our lives together in the ways that matter most. Amen. Welcome.
Let us seek to simplify this moment, slow down for a time. Let us worship, leaning on prayer, reflection, and sharing with one another. For this second week, we're focusing on Psalm 62 of God is holding your life. My one and only, so many songs have utilized this phrase to express devoted love. And this week we see that this tradition goes back all the way to the poets of the psalm tradition. This is a love psalm of trust in the Holy One and Only, who is the rock and refuge in the midst of life that sometimes feels as fleeting as breath. We put our trust in the One who indeed is holding our lives. Turn now your gaze upon the earth. Where is the one who never sleeps? We call the one who guards you now. Lift up your eyes. Behold the hills. From where will help and rescue come? We call on one who made the This week, a church in Germany offered to us an inauguration prayer. They are the Evangelical Church of Westphalia, and they are in covenant with our denomination, the United Church of Christ. So I offer you this prayer as a testimony to how what we do in our churches connects with what people do around the world. We are in it together. Prayer from the Evangelical Church of Westphalia for our sisters and brothers in the United Church of Christ, USA. Merciful God, there is unrest and storms in our hearts and homes, in our societies and in the world. We come before you in prayer for our beloved sisters and brothers in the USA. The democratic heart of America has been violated in front of the world. You heard the prayers of the pious terrorists who made a man their saint. Those of the MPs under the benches who were afraid for their lives. Hear the prayers for our sisters and brothers in the United Church of Christ. They are threatened by deluded hatred, incited by abuse of power and lies, ready for violence and destruction because they don't let go of their courageous testimony to just peace. Today, in the following days of President Biden's inauguration week, we feel particularly concerned for them because in your mission to bring abundant life to all, you connect us as a church in Germany with the UCC through your gift of full church communion. Obedient to this, your call, UCC churches are among the entities that have been identified by law enforcement as potential targets of violent extremists. Holy Spirit, we ask you, protect our sisters and brothers at risk of violence in the parishes of the UCC, their pastors, their leaders in parishes, conferences, and in the, in the national office. Strengthen their faith, their courage, their resilience, in witnessing of your shalom. Jesus Christ, we thank you and praise you. In a world full of injustice and enmity, you have revealed to us God's love of the destitute, the poor, and the wronged. You call us to stand by people in any form of suffering and need. You call us as your church to witness against 
and strive against any form of injustice so that justice may roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever flowing stream. Bind us together, united by your loving spirit in your service and let also us in our context live out to what you're calling and their testimony inspires us to do. God of peace, this week is so crucial for a new start towards justice and peace in this country, so torn apart by racist violence and lies. We ask you for today and all coming days of this week of the inauguration, protect all people from violence, Bless the new President Joe Biden, Vice President Kamala Harris, and the new administration in their efforts for justice and peace and healing of the nation. Grant us all your peace that surpasses all understanding. This peace enters where our understanding deems it impossible. This peace heals what seems to be irreparable. This peace brings healing wholeness, completeness, diversity, and inclusion. Thanks be to you. Amen.
Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And is not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. For God alone my soul waits in silence. From him comes my salvation. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. I shall never be shaken. How long will you assail a person? Will you batter your victim, all of you, as you would a leaning wall, a tottering fence? The only plan is to bring down a person of prominence. They take pleasure in falsehood. They bless with their mouths, but inwardly they curse. For God alone my soul waits in silence, for my hope is from him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. I shall not be shaken. On God rests my deliverance and my honor. My mighty rock, my refuge is in God. Trust in him at all times, O people. Pour out your heart before him. 
God is a refuge for us. Those of low estate are but a breath. Those of high estate are a delusion. And the balances, they go up, but are together lighter than a breath. Put no confidence in extortion and set no vain hopes on robbery. If riches increase, do not set your heart on them. Once God has spoken, twice I have heard this, that power belongs to God, and steadfast love belongs to you, O Lord, for you repay to all according to their work. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May he add his blessing to these words. Does my soul find rest? My life comes from God. Only God is my rock and my life, my stronghold, and I will not be shaken. Whew, that's some confidence. This sounds like it comes from a songwriter that has lived a lot of life and wants to pass on some wisdom to us. And I think that's what it is. Psalm 62 goes on about how wisdom is not to be trusted in people. War and violence are not to be trusted. Money is not to be trusted. Only, the psalmist says, can we really trust in God? And the psalmist, in her wisdom, invites us to think about that too. What does it look like to trust only God? Or maybe another way to say that is, what are the things that we do lean on that aren't really helpful in the long run? What politics or ego or ideas or beliefs or people are we dependent on that really won't help us in the end? We sing together, In God Alone. In God alone is my soul at rest. Be at rest, my soul. In God alone is my soul at rest. Be at rest, my soul. In God alone is my soul.
O Prince of Peace, rule over our hearts, souls, and minds with your peace that passes all understanding. Wherever there are differences, let us rejoice in what we have in common. Where divisions creep in, let unity restore us as one in you. Where hate threatens to tear us apart, let the promise of your love for all the world bring calm amid strife and quiet out of clamor. In all our words and deeds, may the harmony of your presence be among us be shown. Amen. Give thanks for strong and tender hands held out in trust and blessing where words fall short that hands speak out the hearts of love express I close with a benediction ascending forth. Now go in the knowledge that God is holding your life even as we hold each other. You are not alone, you are loved. And I also add a benediction which many of you might have heard from the Reverend Sylvester Beeman, a Baptist pastor who gave the benediction for the inauguration. I share an excerpt in closing. Let us unite in prayer. God, we gather under the beauty of your holiness and the holiness of your beauty. We seek your faith, your smile, your warm embrace. We need you 
for in you we discover our common humanity. In our common humanity, we will seek out the wounded and bind their wounds. We will seek healing for those who are sick and diseased. We will mourn our dead. We will befriend the lonely, the least, the left out. We will share our abundance. We will give justice to the oppressed. We will acknowledge sin and seek forgiveness, thus grasping reconciliation in discovering our humanity. We will seek the good in and for all our neighbors. This is our country. And as such, teach us, O oh God, teach us to live in it, love it, be healed in it, and reconciled to one another in it, lest we miss kingdom's call. Dear glory, majesty, dominion, and power forever, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah, and in the strong name of our collective faith, amen.